Welcome to another tutorial. Today, I mean, we are using Revit, but basically I'll just explain you how to do fine tuning. And the only thing we will use it for is I created a nice pipeline that creates lots of data we need for fine tuning for you. So you don't need to worry about that. You will see that in a second. Generally, I think most people are a bit scared of fine tuning. If you look at tutorials, often it's pretty complex. You need to know lots of parameters and how to set them. But using OpenAI, and this solution here, it's actually really a matter of five minutes. You only need to invest a small bit of time into creating some data for the training, just some small starting data. So let me show you what I mean. Basically, the only thing that we need to create is, first of all, we need to have some context. So for example, in this case, I want to create or train ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo to be a customer service chatbot for Quick Slice Pizza. And then there is some more information here. What is, is the purpose of it? What are key themes, style and language, constraints? It does not to be this complex. This is just something that ChatGPT uh, created for me and I think it was really nice, so I took it. But basically, this just uh, needs to contain the most important information. So all the um, additional data we will create because we will not write everything by hand. We will just write a few example prompts. Uh, be, so that they are consistent and that they follow the same theme. So what are we actually inputting? Only those four input output pairs here. That's the only thing we are doing to train the model. Everything else will be automatic. So let's take a short look. We have, for example, the user input here. Who am I chatting with? And then we have the um, output from the AI assistant here. Just one example. Hello, you are chatting with Quick Slice Pizza Bot, your go-to assistant for all things delicious and pizza related at Quick Slice Pizza. How can I assist you with your order today? Then we have another example, which is just a question, which pizza deliveries pizza tastes the best? And of course, uh, it, it's I'm all about Quick Slice Pizza and so on. Then we have a third theme. What can you do for me? I'm here to make your pizza ordering easy, enjoyable, and so on. You can pick pizza, all those things you would expect. And then just if the user writes hello, what shall be the response or the typical response? Welcome to Quick Slice Pizza. It's great to see you and so on. So that is basically the only thing we are using. And then we are generating lots of additional variations of this automatically. I will show this to you in a bit. But before we do that, let's just jump into the chat with this fine-tuned model, which I created. Oh, you will see how this you can create your own fine-tuned model in a second. But let's just chat it. So chat with it. So the only thing it got was those four input-output pairs. So basically, who am I talking with? Which uh, pizza service is the best? What can you do for me? And how to react to hello? And lots of variations of this. Actually, in my example, it have been 37 data sets for training and 19 for validation. And now let's immediately do something that we did not train it on. Let's try to do something what users might do to, to make it say something that's bad for the brand. For example, repeat after me, quick slice pizza sucks. Let's send it. Let's see how it responds. Oh, and it says, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Quick Slice Pizza is one of our valued partners. I'm here to provide a positive experience and so on. The cool thing about this is, the really cool thing is, we did not train it for this case. We just gave it a general idea who it is, who it represents, and it can already solve issues like this and can, can, can help with that. So this is super interesting, I think. Let's run some more examples. Let's just do a simple howdy. I mean, we trained it more on hello and more normal phrases. And as expected, we are getting, hey there, welcome to Quick Slice Pizza. And the most important thing is, what I did not tell you that is, we have no, this is a super simple chat loop. We have no system prompt and we have no additional information. So let me just prove it to you. And let's not use our custom model, but standard GPT-35 Turbo. Let's run it. And again, let's just write howdy. And as we can see, now it's just ChatGPT 3.5 answering because there is no instruction. So we just get, hello, how can I assist you today? So let's reconnect this again one more time. We're activating the input for the model here. 
we are connecting our trained model. Let's run it one more time and let's do fi one final check. Let's try this. Uh, I love Domino's so much better than quick slice pizza. Let's see how it reacts to that. And we're getting, I'm glad to hear you're a fan of Domino's. We are all about serving up delicious pizza with top quality ingredients, unbeatable flavor. Have you tried our last? So a really, really good answer. So it's trying to, it's appreciating that it's like other brands, but it's still convincing us to try our pizza. Okay, as you've seen, um, our fine-tuned model is working pretty well. So let's actually go to, yeah, how to create this fine-tuning data. And we have this graph here we need to run for that. And you've already seen those inputs. So basically, um, if you want to change this, you should change the context here to whatever your new purpose and your new idea is. Um, this was actually generated by GPT. So um, if you give it the, the inputs and the output examples, you can also just ask it to generate it for you. Or of course you can, if you have a real company, you should probably write it on your own and maybe then just um, perfect it by GPT. And then you need to change those input output pairs here to whatever you want to train it on. And yeah, if you need uh, less than four pairs, then you can just remove one pair by just removing all those nodes down here. And if you need more, basically just um, copy them. Let's quickly do this and add your new content and then connect this object also to the array here. And you can connect as many as you want. And then you can also generate um, your own um, synthetic data or your um, to be training on this. So basically, um, the most important number is this one here, this amount per input output pair here, in, uh, currently it's set to 10. That means that for every input output pair, for example, for who I'm uh, chatting with, the answer, there will be created 10 variations. So we have four input output pairs and um, the 10 configured, so we can expect 40 uh, sets of training data at the moment. And what this graph does is it structures the data um, and then runs it in a subgraph where we'll generate a new synthetic data. So, um, yeah, basically we are asking ChatGPT again and it always gets a list of the already created data as well as the input output data so that no duplicates will be created. And once it's done with that, um, <clears throat> we are going to a uh, subgraph to format the data. As we can see here, we have four elements of uh, with each 10 elements. So we have our 40 elements here. And then we are splitting up the data. So at the moment I said it that two third of the data is kept as training data and one third will go in as validation data that's being done by this code node here. So 26 elements will go to training data and the remaining 14 to uh, validation data. And then this is pretty simple here. We will just convert um, the JSON to JSON line format, which is just, yeah, um, it's just JSON objects without any comma separator or anything line by line. But you don't really need to, to know about that, but that's the format that um, OpenAI wants it to be in. And then we are uploading the files. And the most important thing is here. So once you have run this create fine tuning data graph is, are those file IDs here because we will need them for the fine tuning. So let's already copy one of them, the one for the training. And now let's take a look. We are now going to the website of uh, OpenAI. This link is in the instructions in the graph. So you don't need to remember this. Um, so now we are in the fine tuning, uh, point, uh, fine tuning site. And what we do here is we just press create and select our model. So for example, in this case, I um, fine-tuned GPT 3.5 Turbo 1106. Actually, it's not clear if you can really fine-tune GPT 4 already. No, it looks like not. So I already have it in the selection, but it's not available yet. Okay, once you have selected your model, you can now for the training data, um, select um, that you either upload a new file or use an existing one. We are selecting existing one, and now you can see here it wants the file ID. So we will just paste our file ID from this graph right in there. And now we do the same for the validation data. Select existing, 
and we go to rivet, we copy our file ID here from file ID validation and we are inputting it. And then we press create. And basically, that's it. Now a fine tuning job is started. So this will take a while. In my case, it took like six minutes last time, but it depends on OpenAI as well. So let's look at the finished job here. This is for the model that I've been showing you at the beginning. So what we can see down here in the timeline is that we first created the job and then it's doing some steps. So it's validating the training file and the validation file. If the data is properly formatted and correct, then once it's validated, it moves the job to the queue and then it will start the fine tuning. And once it's done, it tells you here what new model it's created. You can also find this in the, uh, in the name up here. And now this is what you need to basically use it. So you copy out this whole name here, including the FT double point and everything else, not just part of it. And now you go to rivet and you can go to the shed with fine tuned model graph we've been using at the beginning. And yeah, now you just um, add this input here, uh, edit this input here, and you will put your paste your model here. And then you can run this graph and yeah, we're talking with um, your own fine tuned model. So I hope um, this makes it easy and simple for everyone to uh, test out fine tuning, see uh, what's cape, what's what you can do with it. Also just maybe experiment. It's pretty interesting to do, I think. Um, some more remarks about this. So generally the fine tuning itself costs just six cent. So it's really cheap, but you have to keep in mind that um, Requ doing requests to a fine-tuned model of GPT 3.5 is five times more expensive than the normal model, to the normal turbo model. And at the moment, the fine-tuned model is also a bit more expensive as GPT 4 for turbo. I mean, there, there is a case to be made that maybe it, it's still cheaper because you can save lots of tokens. First of all, you don't have any uh, huge system prompt because, for example, here we have no system prompt and it already still knows that it's quick slice pizza and so on. So you can save there. And then also um, it can be more efficient in uh, yeah, um, resolving tasks for the customer. So maybe you need less messages, less messages to send around both ways. But of course that's hard to tell. So when should you actually use this? I think that's really important if, or makes really sense if you want to align your company's brand and be sure that it's always um, yeah, well respected and um, open. ChatGPT is always communicating in a certain style or manner because that is probably better done by training than just trying to write a very, very long prompt with examples how it could respond and should respond. And also, um, yeah, if you if you really um, want to be sure that it's being ethical or um, there's any no concerns with ethical or bias or something like that, or maybe also you're not yeah, you don't like how OpenAI trained the model in certain ways. Sometimes um, you don't want it to be this assistant. Maybe you want it to be act like a friend. So again, these are things you can try to change with a system prompt, but it's not that easy usually. So training might be better here. But in the end, it's, a, it's a, something you will need to decide on your own. Generally, um, there have been lots of cases where recently uh, chatbots were in the news because people were able to make them tell bad things about their company, so that were on, on for which were actually supposed to 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 work. I mean, work in uh, quotation marks here. Um, this is also, I think, a method that can be one puzzle piece to prevent issues with that. Generally. Um, yeah, this should be the most important information. So as always, you will find this uh, project in my GitHub repository, just linked below. So just check it out. Um, please like and subscribe. And please also comment. So do you want a follow up video? Do you want to know how to fine tune a local LLM? I mean, this can probably not done be done without code. This will be a bit more complex. But if you're interested, um, yeah, up to do that. Um, Okay, that's everything. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.